All right, on to a, couple, a, a few more examples. Um, we're going to sketch a tangent graph. And what I want to remember is the basic tangent graph looks like this, where it has asymptotes. And so I'm trying to remember that. And so this negative out in front, it's going to reflect that. And so instead of going up, it's going to be coming down. So, plus 5. Notice that it's not in parentheses with the x, and so that's actually going to cause it to go up 5. And so this dot is going to be centered up 5 more than where it is right now. And so I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right here, I'm going to center that like that. Things to keep in mind as well um, is where our... asymptotes go. Our period is pi. Um, I'm going to mark pi over 2's because at pi over 2 we're going to get our asymptotes. And why is that again? How do I know my asymptotes show up at pi over 2? At pi over 2 tangent is 90 degrees. And so that's 0 comma 1 your x and your y. Tangent is y divided by x, in this case 1 divided by 0, which is undefined. And that's why we get asymptotes that show up at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, so on. Things to keep in mind, the tangent graph does not have an amplitude because it's the distance away from 0. The period is still pi because it's unaffected by anything like that. The asymptotes are at pi over 2, and if I add another pi, I'll get to 3 pi over 2. So I'm just going to say plus pi times n, where n is some integer. So, now I know I want to be centered around this dot. I'm centered around that middle line 5, and instead of going up and to the right, because of the negative, I'm going to fall down and to the right. Now, what does the 3 do? The 3, if it was in front of a sine function, would be it, a, a vertical stretch. And it still is a vertical stretch. And it's going to go, go down a whole lot faster than it usually does. Um, but we're not going to worry about that and how it shows up on our graph because I'm more so worried about where the asymptotes show up. And so we have our asymptotes of pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. We've got the center, sort of where that inflection point, as we call it, is. And there's your tangent graph. A lot, um, a lot going on there. And our last example, one with every little bit going on. So, 2 plus 3 cosine 4 pi, man. So 2, this is a 2 that can be added here, or it could be seen as a plus 2 on the end. That 2 makes it go up 2. That 3 is the amplitude. And so I'm going to say the amplitude is 3. The 4 pi affects the period. Period equals 2 pi divided by whatever that is, divided by 4 pi. So in this case, the pi's cancel out, you get 1 half, so the period is 1 half. So we said it shifted up 2, and so I'm going to draw my midline right here. And amplitude is 3, so from there it's going to go down 3 to negative 1, and up 3, to 5. This 1 fourth causes it to go to the left 4. Sorry, so the max was 5 and the min was negative 1. And we could call it a line, name it as a y equals 5 and a y equals negative 1. Um, and so the thing to keep in mind, too, is that this is a cosine graph, so it's going to start at the peak, 
and go down, but we're going to shift it. So before I do that, I have to determine um, what my period looks like. So the period is one half. So I'm going to mark that. This is a fourth, half of a half, and then an eighth, and then three eighths. You can mark it in fractions, I think is easier, but some of us aren't very good at fractions. And so I can understand if that's where you're at. Because I'm going to the left one fourth, I've marked negative one eighth and negative one fourth because I'm moving it to the left. So, cosine graph usually starts at the peak, and so usually we'd start at one, but it, it's shifted up and stretched. But then also, our left one fourth. So we're going to start at one fourth. Usually it would repeat by the one half, but that too has moved to the left one fourth. Halfway in between that is zero, and so right there it's at the valley. Halfway in between that, meeting at the equilibrium point, not at zero, but at the equilibrium point. And so this is what our graph looks like. Another one fourth, we're going to be back at one half. And so you could continue it this way if you wanted to. And there you have it. And now for one that's a little backwards. Um, we're going to give the amplitude, period, and an equation going backwards and writing this function. So, it's centered around zero, it's gone up to two, and down to negative two. And so the amplitude is two, and so the number in front of my equation is going to be two. If you look at the period, this horizontal axis, this is marked as five right here, and so you can know that this is going to be four. So the period is four. So how did we get there? Well, we did 2 pi divided by some b equals 4. So if we cross multiply, sorry, the dogs are going a little crazy, uh, 2 pi equals 4b, and our p, b, if we divide by 4 now, is pi over 2, because 2 over 4 is 1 half. And now our equation. starts at the peak, so it's going to be a cosine graph. y equals our amplitude, 2, times our cosine. And now this, it's very important that you notice that the 4 is not going to go in front. It's the pi over 2. It's the b that changes the period to become 4 that goes right here, times our x. And that is our equation. And there we have translating all cosine, tangent, sine, with all the translations in play.